This is your first quiz review for specifically infinite series. Now, there already is a sequence video that hopefully you've watched to get ready on sequences, but as we said, the AP really, the focus is the series. So I want to go through and make sure you're ready for the first quiz, which will be over the first three sections in Chapter 9. Now, in those sections, with our series tests, we have five tests that we've learned so far. There are many more that we will learn in the coming sections, but for now, the only tests that you have to know and that you'll be required to use are those five, which were the telescoping test, the geometric test, the nth term test for divergence, the integral test, and the p-series test. So everything to, that you would expect on this quiz, you have to be able to use one. Sometimes you can even use more than one. Um, at that point, you just use whichever one is more comfortable to you to show me if it converges or diverges. The other thing that shows up on this quiz is for the ones that you can actually find the sum, and the only two that those are are the telescoping and the geometric series, you have to actually be able to find those sums. So that's that's what we're going to start with. I have two slides on this review. One is dealing with just finding the sum, and I'm focusing entirely on geometric, and then one is dealing with a whole bunch of series and using the test to determine what it actually does, converge or diverge. Now, when you look at these, hopefully you recognize pretty quickly that they are geometric. Um, as I said, I didn't put any telescoping on this review video because there's not a lot of telescoping options out there. I think we've done every single one I've ever seen, um, and they become very redundant, but the geometric really are more of a focus, and they show up so much on AP so I want to make sure that no matter how it's presented, no matter how many different twists and turns they do, that you're comfortable finding the sum of a geometric sequence. So what a geometric sequence has in common is they all always have what's called a ratio or an R value or a multiplier that is, that is what you're using to multiply to get the next term that you're adding in your summation. What, in order to find the sum, the formula is A over 1 minus R. A refers to as the first term, and we talked that our textbook likes to start at n equals 0, so it's what happens when you put 0 in. But a lot of times the AP and a lot of the other prep books like to start at 1. So A is what you get when you put 1 in. So no matter where it starts, A is that first term that you're getting. And then R is referred to as your ratio or your multiplier. It is what is being taken to the nth power whenever you have it written in that form. So we're going to go through, look at these, talk about kind of the easy to the hard and the different presentations to make sure you're comfortable. So the first one is more of a basic one. Um, the first term is very easy to find. You're just putting 1 in for n, so your first term is 3 fourths. Your R value is your multiplier. Now, you will have to see what is being taken to the n power. Right now, 4 is being taken to the n power, but because it's in the bottom, we would say that our R, our ratio, is 1 fourth. So my formula is 3 fourths over 1 minus a fourth, which is 3 fourths over 3 fourths, giving me a sum of my series of 1. And what that means is if I keep adding my terms together, I will get a sum of 1 in the end. Second one, um, probably a pretty obvious geometric, a little twist on it. Instead of to the n power, we say it's to the 3n power. Uh, that's going to come into play whenever we determine our r value. So first, I'm going to figure out my first term. My first term is what I get when I put a 1 in. So when I put a 1 in, I get 1 fourth cubed. That is 1 64th. Now, to find my r, you really want to see what's to the n power. You don't want that 3 to be there. So I'm going to cube out my fraction. So 1 fourth cubed would be 1 64th. And say, you know what, that's actually 1 64th to the n. That will give you a lot better idea of what your r is. Your r is 1 64th. So we have 1 64th over 1 minus 1 64th, which is 1 64th over 63 64th. When I multiply by the reciprocal, I get 1 over 63. The next one, I actually found this from the Kaplan Review book, and I just liked the way that it presented it in a very different kind of ugly fashion. Didn't it, You kind of tell that it's geometric, but it's maybe harder to figure out the R value just by looking at it. What I think is easiest to do with this one is rewrite it. Take those exponents and say, I know that if I have 9 to the negative n plus 1, it's actually like having 9 to the negative n times 9 to the first. And then if I have 8 to the n plus 1, that's 8 to the n times 8. I can multiply these together, saying I've got 72. The 9, because it has a negative n, I'm going to move it to the bottom, so I have 8 to the n over 9 to the n. Or in other words, I have 72 times 8 ninths to the n. It's so much easier to look at that as my series and be able to say, oh, now I can see my ratio. It's pretty obvious. It's 9 eighths. So I've got my first term. My first term is what I get when I put a 1 in, so 72 times 8 ninths uh, reduce. You get 64 is your first term. And then 1 minus 8 ninths is 1 ninth. So I have 64 divided by a ninth, 64 times 9. Very large sum on this one. 
576. But when your first term's so large and your r is really close to 1, it shouldn't be a huge surprise that you have a pretty big sum. And then the last one, just presented differently. All the other ones were presented in sigma notation, but they do not have to be done that way. I've seen a lot of AP problems that are presented more kind of term by term, where you have to look at it and determine, yes, it's geometric. Sometimes they'll even tell you, this is geometric, what's the sum? You need to be identify the first term and then the r, the multiplier. Well, my first term is obvious. It is whatever the first number is. It is 4. My multiplier, what you'll notice is when I look at my terms, my terms are alternating between positive and negative. What that should tell you is that your r is negative. So that I start, I multiply by a negative, and then I, then I get a positive, then I multiply by another negative and get a negative. And then what's happening is my denominator is tripling. I'm multiplying by 3 in the denominator, so I would say that my ratio is negative 1 third. Negative to get the terms to alternate, and then the 1 third to get the bottom to multiply by 3. So I have 1 minus a minus 1 third. So I have 4 over 4 thirds, which is 4 times 3 fourths, which is 3. So what you see for all of these, all of these are converging geometric series. All of them have ratios that are less than 1. Again, we look at the absolute value of that when we determine converging or diverging. I knew that going in because I told you at the beginning to find the sum. And all of them, we can use that formula to determine the sum of the geometric sequence. The other task that you need to be able to know how to do is you need to be able to look at a whole bunch of series, and you'll have a whole section, I think there's eight of them on the quiz, where all the directions will say is here's a bunch of series. What does it do, and why do you know that? What test did you use? You always have to put what it does. In the end, it should say converge or diverge. It should say here's the test I used, and whatever supporting work that you have to show. Some you have to show a lot of supporting work, some you have very little. So the first one, when you look at that, hopefully you look at that and you realize that that is a p-series because the bottom is just n to a power, which is what you'll see in a p-series. It does not matter what coefficient is on top. My power is 4 thirds. That is bigger than 1, so my p-series test says that it converges. So we just say it's converging by p-series. That's all the supporting work, not as much for p-series. For the second one, after what we just did on, on that last previous slide, I would say that you look at this and think, oh, that's geometric. I've seen a lot of these. But the difference with this geometric is my r is now bigger than 1. And for geometric, when r is bigger than 1, we say that it diverges. And that is by geometric. Geometric and p-series will not have a lot of supporting work. It will be you're identifying the p, you're identifying the r, and this is what it does. The next one, there's a couple ways you could start this. Um, some people look at this and think, well, I'm going to take a limit, because I know how to take a limit. I'm going to deal a little lopy tau and see what happens. So I'm going to start that way and show you what happens. If I look at the limit of natural log of n over n as I go to infinity, I get infinity over infinity. So I do lopy tau, and I get 1 over n over 1. And then I take the limit now as I go to infinity, and I get 0. And what that just told me is really absolutely nothing. Because my nth term test for divergence says if I take the limit of that sequence and I get anything other than 0, it diverges. If I get 0, I don't know anything, and I have to try another test. So at this point, if you started that route, we've got to switch gears. You may have looked at this and go, I'm not even going to bother doing that. I'm going to integrate it. And really, that's your only other option here, because it is not a p-series. It is not geometric. It is not telescoping. So if I integrate it, I'm going to set up my limit as I go to infinity of 1 to b. And we've integrated a lot of these before. We know that u has to be natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x. This is a perfect u du. So when I integrate it, I get the natural log squared over 2. And at this point, you probably can stop doing work, because hopefully you realize that when you take the natural log of something that is becoming infinite, you get infinity which diverges, and what that tells me here is that this original series would have to diverge, and the name of the test is the integral test. My next one, hopefully, is a more obvious nth term test. Um, this one, like the previous one, you try the nth term, nothing happens. Hopefully, you look at this, you know immediately that the nth term will work, because you have a rational function that it is very easy to use limit guidelines and determine your limit. If I take the limit, and I usually am kind of generic and just say of a sub n, call that the sequence that represents the series, I get 3. That is definitely not 0, so we say it diverges by nth term. And again, nth term test only tells me that things diverge. If we actually get 0, it tells me nothing, and I have to do like what I did in the earlier problem and try another test. 
The next one, uh, nth term test will not work here because I would take up the limit and I would get zero. So it would be fail to be conclusive in any way. But I can definitely integrate this. So I can take my limit as I go to infinity. It's an ugly b, sorry about that. It's going from 1 to b of 1 over, this is x plus 1 to the third. So your u is x plus 1, no adjustment. This is just a u to the negative a third, which you get when you do power 1 greater. You get 3 halves u to the 2 thirds. So we get 3 halves x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. And this will be another one that you probably at this point can stop doing much work because you hopefully realize that when you put an infinite value in and you take it to a power, two-thirds power or any power, you're going to get an infinite value. Therefore, since this diverges, we can say that my original series diverges by the integral test. So these first five pretty specific to what you're going to see as far as the level of difficulty, the, the variety of questions. The very last one I put up here, I, I should have put maybe the title challenge on here. This is definitely a challenge type problem. We will look at ways later in the course to make this problem a little easier. But I want to talk about based on our just our current knowledge now, what would we have to do? So when you look at this one, the first thing you may realize is this is not quite a P series or a geometric series because in a P series, you have n to a power, that's a number. This time you have n to a to an n. And in geometric, you have a number to the n, and this time again, you have an n to the n. So it's like there's too many n's going on here to be P series or geometric. It is definitely not something that I know how to integrate, and it is definitely not um, telescoping, because in telescoping, you always have something subtracted so you can cancel. So I have four tests that I can throw out right away. The only thing that leaves me with is the nth term. And this one's going to be an nth term, but it's going to be pretty involved. So for sake of space, I'm actually going to do it on the next slide so you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. So if you think about what happens as I take the limit as we go to infinity, because that's what the nth term test is. Sorry, my pen's going a little crazy on me. If I take the limit as I go to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. We actually did this problem last year in Calc 1 uh, whenever we were doing L'Hopital. Here's the problem. I can't, if I put infinity in, I get 1 plus 0, that's 1, to the infinite power. That is another indeterminate form, not as common as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So we have to figure out a way to rewrite it so that I can actually use L'Hopital. I do not like the fact that there's a power up there. This n needs to come down. And the way that happens is by using natural logs. So hopefully this sounds a little bit familiar to last year. What we did is we said, OK, I need two sides. Because if I'm going to take the natural log of one side, i got to take the natural log of the other. So I'm just going to generically call the other side y. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And what that's going to allow me to do is bring down my power. So I bring down the n, and then I have the natural log of 1 plus 1 over n. And as you're doing this now, you might say, OK, this sounds kind of familiar. Probably not tremendously, but you did do this last year. Only when you did it, you weren't trying to evaluate a series. You were just trying to work with limits and practice in L'Hopital. Now, if I want to do L'Hopital, I really want it to be rational. So I want to change the way this is written, and I want to write it as the natural log of 1 plus 1 over n over 1 over n, kind of changing the way it's written to create a fraction where there wasn't one already. Now if I put infinity in, I get 0 over 0. Uh, I get the natural log of 1, which is 0, over 1 divided by infinity, which is 0. So I can do L'Hopital. So when I do L'Hopital, it's the derivative of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over n over 1 plus 1 over n over the derivative of 1 over n. So the derivative of 1 plus 1 over n is negative 1 over n squared over 1 plus 1 over n over the derivative of 1 over n, which again is negative 1 over n squared. These cancel. You end up with 1 over 1 plus 1 to the n. Now if I put infinity in, this will go to 0. I get 1. Now there was a little piece that actually you're not really done. Um, what you need to do here is you need to figure out what happens, um, what y is. So we need to take e on both sides, because we need to get rid of that ln piece. So we say that my limit is 1 excuse me, is, is e to the 1. The limit is e. Now, after we've done this problem for so long, you probably forgot why we were even doing this. The whole idea is we were doing an nth term test, which said if we take the limit of that function piece, which I did, and I don't get 1, excuse me, I don't get 0, which I didn't get, 
then we say it diverges. So since I finally, after a whole ton of work, got a limit that was not zero, I can say that that series diverges by nth term. Now, as I said when we started this problem, this is a challenge type problem. This is not a problem that you're going to see in a lot of context at this point. You definitely should be feel a lot more comfortable on the earlier ones that were more obvious. We will look at things throughout the course of the chapter that will make this problem a little easier, that will get rid of the necessity of doing all this L'Hopital and limits. However, I've seen questions like this show up later in the chapter where if at least we have this conversation now, it might make life a little easier later. Uh, bottom line to get ready for this quiz, what you need to know to be successful is you have to be able to work with sequences. You have to be able to look at all the series tests that we've done, the five that we've done, and determine convergence or divergence. And you have to be able to find the sum of a series.